This conference will now be recorded. So from previous session, we have uh, consumed Wistel file, and from there, we have generated the SOAP classes. Okay, now let's see what are the classes generated? What are the APS classes generated in the client org for my Wistel? So if you see, there are basically two classes being generated. So if you want to understand the generated classes and the structure, first, first let's see, uh, automatically self is generating two different APS classes. So how many namespaces you have? Let me show you. If you see here, we have one target namespace, this one, okay. So like this, how many namespaces you have for each imported namespaces, two APS classes will be generated. Now, one classes will be for synchronous services and one class will be for asynchronous services. So what is your class name you give with that async will be as a prefix and asynchronous classes will generate. If you see from the example, so now let me go to my class. Okay, so here I have get I created soap lead manager class. So same time, if you see, I have another class generated which we call async soap lead manager. Let me open both these classes and explain what it means. So one class one class we use for our synchronous services and one classes will be used for asynchronous services. So now let me explain the SOAP synchronous services class what we created SOAP lead manager. So let me see what is this class. If I open this class now, I'm going to open this SOAP lead manager. Let me, let me explain the what kind of thing on this class is. So now I'm comparing this class with the provided Wistel file then I'll understand how my UCL file got changed or got generated to my APS class. Okay, so this is my UCL file for two yard. From this, we generated two classes. So there are many wrapper classes you can see log info, debug info element came. So finally, if you just scroll down in the in the end, you see which class name you have given. You have you have given the class name as uh, uh, SOAP lead manager. Okay. So you see there is a class came lead manager inside this I have a class lead manager. So how this class came? If you go to your um, Wistel file, you see for the port you have name lead manager. For each port we are going to create one class. See one class came here lead manager. So now if you see in this lead manager what operation i'm going to do if you see on this lead manager binding i am going to one operation called create new lead so that create new lead going to be one method excuse me so create new lead going to be one method in my apps class so create new lead takes what create new lead takes some request parameter and if you see in my create new lead, I have my request parameters. If you see here, first name, last name, company name, email, phone. So these are nothing but you can see each one, one parameter. Then it create the request, request object. Then it set all the parameters. And then finally, it calls my invoke method. Okay, now to support this, what data types we have for each kind of data types, and uh, all the classes are generated. Address is a complex data type. For the address, you can see this is my class generated. Okay, so now whenever I'm going to create a new lead as a parameter element, I'm going to pass these information, first name, last name, company name, that's the class also. The result is another response element class. So based on your uh, Apex, sorry, OB or WSTL, my classes being generated here you can see color options debug info location is a complex type of data type with latitude longitude all data types everything whatever you see here in my in my wstl if you go to types each 
element what we have you see there is an element called call options now if you see there will be a, a some some of some classes will have call options element okay so for call options what is the element same way you see debugging header there is a class called debugging header element so for each element there is going to be a class which defines what type it contains okay so now if you see log info then you can see there will be a log info element see log info you have here so it's a complex type log info same way if you see log category okay so log info having category and everything defined one by one debugging info element same way you can say session header element everything now when i have this class this, sorry this visual file in the visual file i have my location and if you see this location nothing but goes to my endpoint you can see here endpoint defined what is the endpoint and you can see there is some property came as client certificate name client certificate password okay input header output header and you can see something called session header we are going to use all these things so this is nothing but when i want to make an authenticated call i can use certificates or i can use session informations to make a call that part to see you can see here so completely whatever thing i have in my usual file based on that this class generated and whenever i want to invoke simply i have to invoke this method this method is responsible to send my request uh, to my endpoint you can see the request i'm building here and then final this call will go to my endpoint defined to invoke this method we'll see that in next session how i'm going to invoke so in same way if you see i have one more class automatically generated which is called async soap lead manager so what is the class name we have given same way one more class will come with async as prefix so this is going to be used for the asynchronous call so here if you see uh, usually it's always remember when you import you still self first automatically generate two apps classes for each namespace in the still okay so one will be for synchronous services one will be asynchronous and when asynchronous means it starts with the async automatically class name it will be there okay so now uh, the here we have basically two uh, kind of uh, invoke services will be there which help us to invoke uh, any call asynchronously to my server so if you want to make any call asynchronously to the server then what i can do i can use there is two mechanism one call end invoke and one call begin invoke these are automatically generated okay so simply if you want to call i can call this method method continuous continuous method begin create new lead then we can set what parameter i want okay with the continuation first name last name lead come name i can set it up and asynchronously my endpoint will be invoked or my sub services will be invoked from here if you want your sub service to be invoked asynchronously then simply we can use this class okay so the public service method what we have uh contains if you see compared to both these classes this is my public service method create new lead here i have parameter uh first name last name and everything what i defined in my uh we file but when you go to async with that we will get an additional parameter in that uh, invocation which is nothing but continuation okay so this continuation makes like it's a fast parameter which makes us uh, to make the asynchronous call uh, for my sub services from here okay so uh, these web services operations will be invoked asynchronously and the response what we have, we want the responses we will get by calling from the get value if you want to get the response from the service uh, asynchronous in the sense you just invoke the call and uh, forget it you continue other work you we are not going to wait to get the response but when you then once you are ready to receive the response or once you want the response to be accepted by you then you can call this get value method okay so we can invoke api call starting with my begin invoke method 
then we can uh, when you call the get response that will call finally to my end inbox okay so then we'll get the response this is two calls for the asynchronous if you want to get response here also we define the endpoint we define my uh, service uh, uh, methods with begin create new lead with parameters and we can invoke we'll see both how it's going to work how how both we are handling in the upcoming sessions so to understand whenever your rapid classes being generated from this style always remember there are two classes will be there one for synchronous services one for asynchronous services so synchronous services in the sense you invoke the service wait to get the response asynchronous in the sense you invoke the service don't wait let processing happen in that server side you continue other activities okay then you can make a call then you can get the response if you want so for this kind of asynchronous we have another classes generated which nothing but uh, async prefix with async then there is we have uh, one call begin create new lead your service method what you have then you want to when you want to invoke the service you can call that method and when you want to get response simply you can call this get value method so this will invoke my end invoke method of the web service call out and then from there i'll get the response so same for synchronous and asynchronous what you want we can do it so now finally we got what are the classes need to be generated for my lead manager class where i have created these two classes now next i will see how i am going to integrate from my system to the uh, server so how i can pass some data from this client system to the server system and how this is going to create a record in my server we'll see i'll invoke from the client so what we did till now generated my apis class my apis class are ready now we have to invoke it so we'll see how i'm going to invoke my apis web services from client to server in the next session thank you stay tuned for next session